everyone in this uh, project we want to control the uh, DC uh, motor so and increase and decrease its um, speed with using two switch that we have on our uh, launch pad so here what we have so we have the Tiva C series launch pad which has the Cortex M4 microcontroller so we use actually one transistor TIP1222 and also we have our 12 volt DC motor so we are able to increase and decrease the speed of the DC motor and somehow we control the DC motor with these two switch that we have if you push one of them so it's able to increase the speed of the DC motor so if I use the other switch and push that it actually decrease the speed of the DC motor even you could stop that so again if you push this one it's going to be increase the speed so it could get the maximum speed and again whenever you push switch 2 it's going to decrease the speed of this DC motor so let to see how we could do that we will take a look to the circuit diagram and also the codes in energy so let's to take a look to the circuit diagram and see what we have in the circuit diagram. So this is a circuit diagram. So as you could see, we have our launch pad. We use two switch on board, which is switch one and switch two that we have on the launch pad. They connected to the port PF0 and PF4, switch two connected to PF0 and switch one connected to PF4. Uh, so we use the PF3 as a output which is already connected to the uh, green LED. So that's the reason whenever you actually control the DC motor because you use pulse with modulation and you are also able to fade the uh, green LED that we have. If you or if you take a look to the previous uh, part of this video which we control the DC motor in the same time because you put the pulse pulse with modulation on the PF3 in the same time you somehow you fade the green LED too so we use actually the TIP 122 which is somehow interface between your 12 DC 12 volt DC motor and your launch pad which is work 3 with 3.3 volts so somehow let us to uh, connect these two to each other and somehow interface these uh, 12 volt section with this 3.3 volt uh, part that we have here so this is our circuit diagram. Let's do check the codes and see how we could write the codes. So, so in the beginning, definitely you need to declare the two port that you use, PF0 and PF4, switch 1 and switch 2 on board. So we label that switch 1 and switch 2. You just have two variables here so which is the duty cycle you initialize with the zero and jump which is the five somehow jump is you jump the this duty cycle that you use here on your analog write function so you are going to change that numbers so here you use the pull up so for switch one and two so pull up means your uh, switch is uh, is up so that means is one whenever you don't push them so whenever you push the switch they actually internally connected to the ground so that means by pushing the switch you actually deliver zero volt to pf4 and pf0 so if you take a look to the main section of the program so definitely you have two if statement one actually check and see when your switch one is pushed and the next one check when switch two pushed okay so whenever you push the switch one 
so if you check the previous uh, video which was the pulse wedge modulation with Tiva C series launchpad so I explained how you could make the pulse wedge modulation in with using the analog right uh, function this is exactly the same thing so whenever you push the switch one you actually use or put the pulse wedge modulation on pin PF3 and but you are not giving these duty cycles which could be a number between 0 to 255 so instead whenever you push that definitely in the beginning it's a start with the zero so that means there is no turning on your DC motor so but whenever you push that it's actually increase the duty cycle with jumping with 10 5 which we actually already put here so that means you start with the zero. If you push that, it's, it's it should be the zero plus five, so which is five. So then you increase that 10, 15, 20. So that means in every time you are pushing that switch, you are going to change this duty cycle by five values. So definitely you are going to somehow increase the cycle that you turn on the transistor so somehow you increase the speed of that because the average of the uh, dc voltage is increased and you increase the average dc voltage that you deliver your D dc motor so definitely there is a limitation for this it is 255 so that you just put one if a statement here if that number goes over that again you just initialize that to 255 somehow this this actually don't let that number goes over 255 so you, you you have exactly the same algorithm for whenever you push the switch to so whenever you push the switch to again you start with the duty cycles zero or whatever you left from previous section so this time definitely you want to decrease the decrease the uh, speed of the DC motor so that means you need to decrease these number these duty cycle that you have here so that's the reason the new duty cycle should be duty cycles whatever you already have minus the jump which is five value so that means by pushing that you decrease the number by five somehow you decrease your duty cycle so if you decrease the duty cycle definitely you decrease the speed of the uh, speed of the and uh, this is the speed of your DC motor. So uh, let you load the codes on our microcontroller and see if it works or not. So I load the codes, let to see if it works or not. So this is switch one, it should be increase the speed. So I start with just increase that very slowly. So see it's actually start to go up so I actually push it again push more so push more so if you continue to do that you could actually get the maximum speed that you want okay so let's do the same thing right now we are almost on probably we are on 255 which is we get the maximum speed that you could so now let to just decrease that it's just pushing this yeah so as you can see it's going to be slower 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 and finally it's going to be stop so again you could actually increase the speed and you could decrease that with this so, so as you could see so our codes work. So let's do connect these PF3 that we have here, which is produce the pulse width modulation and see if we could see that pulse width modulation on the oscilloscope. So I'm going to connect this PF3 port to the oscilloscope and see whenever I'm changing this or pushing this to switch, could I see the changing in the duty cycle on that uh, square wave that we have on PF3. Let's do that. Okay, so this is the port PF3, which is I connected directly to oscilloscope. So right now I'm going to push the switch one and two and see what we change we have on the PF3 port. So if I push the switch one, which is I'm going to increase the 
uh, pulse width modulation. So you see, I able to increase that right now. Duty cycle is also 50 percent, around 50 percent. I increase that, increase that, and this is what I could get. So if I push the switch to, so definitely you see how the pulse width modulation works, right? So see, right now it's going to be small and small. So if I push the switch one again, I could actually increase the duty cycle. So this is actually what happened on port PF3 whenever you push the switch one and switch two, which is exactly shows the pulse width modulation and how these two switch able to change the duty cycle of your signals. So I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching this video.